Chestnut has some insane potential and honestly no one knows it. Stat wise, it's got solid physical defensive bulk, along with some respectable firepower at base 107 attack. The true sauce comes when you realize this thing has access to belly drum, which immediately gives us a plus six to our attack at the cost of half of our health. Now with Chestnut being so slow, this doesn't really do much for us, unless there's some grassy terrain on the battlefield. With this, Chestnut has the ability to fire off priority grassy glides, which is a 55 power grass move that is only priority on grassy terrain. This grassy terrain also gives us a solid buff to grass type moves, making the glides even stronger. Plus, if we're at a third HP or less, we even get an additional 50% boost to grass moves thanks to its ability overgrow, and almost nothing wants to deal with this. Chestnut's natural bulk allows us to take attacks easily to set this up, and it can even stay alive by bopping fools with stab drain punches. In general, this is super useful because no one expects Chestnut to go full offensive mode on him. Look, to me, it really feels like Chestnut is like one of the most forgotten starter Pokemon. And for that reason, nobody's really afraid of this thing. But today that is all about to change because we're gonna show some love to the, the big boy. Now, if you're into this kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400K and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. So I don't think I ever even knew that Chestnut has the ability to both belly drum and even grassy glide. So as I was building this team, I was like, why are people not doing this? So my opponent's gonna go ahead and lead off with a Veluza as I have a nice little coffee table who's here to lay down some stealth rock. And I'm considering going for the attack here because I know that this fella wants to, sushi is on the menu, essentially. All these things do, they come in and they fillet away, which is kind of gruesome, literally just chops himself up and at the cost of half of its health, gives it a nice little plus two to attack and speed, which honestly is pretty scary. Veluza is now definitely a threat, and I decided to just go for the Stealth Rock. Now the reason for that is because I know that I'm actually sturdy, and of course I can take at least one attack, as long as it's not like a multi-hit attack, but surely this thing just goes for an Aqua Cutter, that's exactly what it's gonna do. Sharpness boosted, plus two, it is super effective. Obviously that's gonna turn me into a whole bunch of little coffee tables. I'm sliced up out here, but I do live with a sturdy, and that now allows me just to fire off the Rock Blast. So I love myself a good sturdy lead for a few reasons. First of all, because we can do stuff like that and we are not being set up on by a Veluza turn one. I will eat my Switch cartridge if uh, I get swept by that. So that is gonna take care of the fish and now they can go into whatever they like. So they decide to bring in the Donphan, which is a smart play because they can now outspeed me, go for a rapid spin, not only take care of my Stealth Rock, but also kill me if I didn't have myself a nice little Custap snack. I'm able to activate my Custap Berry. Allows me to go first and fire off a Mountain Gale, which actually doesn't miss. And it ends up killing the Donphan, which is amazing because that even takes out like a max HP Donphan. And that is exactly what this Avalug lead is here to do. This thing is not great, but it's always extremely satisfying when you can get stuff like that to happen. So now they decide with two Mons down, they're actually just going to go into Backscalibur and not play any games here with this anymore. And they just Ice Shard me. They're like, no, no more shenanigans. <laughs> out of this, uh, this table fella. So that takes care of me, which is fine. We did way more than that thing usually does. And at this point, I decide to go into the olive tree. Now I'm thinking this is a perfect opportunity for me to uh, basically bait this thing into knocking me out. It's gonna be able to set up my grassy terrain. And if they wanna go for a dragon dance here, I can actually just go for the strength sap, which is just basically going to bring that attack back to you know neutral and not have to worry about this thing going crazy. So they actually end up going for the Icicle Spear, which is very sharp and very hurts. And that is definitely gonna knock me out, but as it is gonna level the amount of Pokemon we have left, I'm fine with that just because I only really went into this to mostly just activate that Grassy Surge. I guess it's actually the Seed Sower. Re regardless, there's grass on the battlefield at this point, and that is gonna help out our nice little friend Chestnut here. So. As I go into the Juggernaut, I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty nuts out here. Going into this against a Backscalibur, not a general good idea. However, I do have the Terra, so I'm actually going to go for that Terra Water, and then it is time to start Belly Drumming, which is fun because truly nobody expects Chestnut to do this. So I put the Fountain on my head that's going to allow me to resist the Ice School Crash, and especially with the Terrain Extender, I have. On the olive tree, we're looking like this is going to stick around and allow me to have some priority for basically the remainder of the match. So, they do go for the Ice Cold Crash here, which is perfect. I am extremely physically defensive naturally, so I can just take physical attacks all day long, especially resisted. And uh, even with the five hits, it's going to just barely scratch us. Allows us now to just go for the Belly Drum, which is ridiculous. 
and that is going to maximize our attack. So at plus six, Chestnut is uh, having some fun. Also, it is lunchtime because we get ourselves a nice little citrus berry. And the little extra double whammy is fun because with that grassy terrain, we actually get a little bit of health back even after that. So all said and done, we're actually above half health here. And even the only priority this thing has is in the form of Ice Shard, which obviously we can live. And as I can go for a grassy glide here, I just decide to Drain Punch. I know that I can take an attack from this thing. And they actually just decide to go for the Earthquake as just a neutral move. But one thing about grassy terrain that most people don't know is that it actually reduces damage from Earthquake specifically. So while that wasn't going to do too much regardless, I'm able to take it extremely nicely and then fire off a Stab Drain Punch, which does finish off the back Scalibur. Not only that, but gives us a ton of health. And with that uh, extra grass, we are feeling pretty healthy over here. So, now on the revenge switch, they decide to bring in the salty Minecraft boy. And the Garganackle is... they just saw me drain punch. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go for a grassy glide here regardless. And they are going to go ahead and commit the Terra. A lot of the time, if they bring this in in a situation like this, it's probably going to be a ghost Terra try to get me to drain punch right through them. And then a salt cure is annoying because I'm obviously water type now. So they do go for the Terra Ghost trying to catch that drain punch. But instead I just glide right at him and that is actually just going to straight up knock out the guard. Which is, again, one of the most satisfying feelings ever. Especially when they just commit the Terra. And now you can enjoy being ghost type in hell, my friend. So I am now basically at full health on an absolute tear and the only problem in the remainder of the matchup is that they have this Rotom mode. This thing comes in probably to mow the grass because the battlefield is covered in grass but the problem is I have uh, a not very effective hit with the grassy glide. So I do go for it here and it's not quite going to be enough to knock it out which is unfortunate and this now allows them to go for that super effective volt switch which we are able to live because Chestnut is not going down that easy and thank god they did not go for like a leaf storm there. So. Just not, not being super bulky on the special side, they probably expected me to either switch there or just Volt Switch to kill, which uh, at the amount of health we were at, we are feeling pretty good. So, now they go into their final remaining mod other than the Rotom, which is going to be the Pheasantipity. Now, here's a really fun interaction with this. After the grassy terrain recovery, I'm sitting at 61 HP, and while I could go for a not very effective grassy glide, Ordinarily, Pheasantipity is able to live that, which we are able to just cleanly knock it out. And the reason for that is because I was actually in Overgrow range. Overgrow is obviously the ability where at less than one third of my health, I do get a 50% boost to my grass moves. That paired with the boost from the grassy terrain is enough to knock out like likely a max HP Pheasantipity, which is honestly insane. Most of the time, Chestnut's going to be you know bulletproof, but turns out Overgrow... It can actually come in clutch. That's going to finish off the match. Chestnut absolutely put him in a body bag. And that is going to bring us into game number two. Which is looking pretty scary because they have some massive threats over there. But with some possibility for answers to the Chestnut and things like the King Gambit. Along with Iron Crown, potentially Conkelder. It's going to be a little tough for us. So let's jump into it. Alright, so this time my dude's going to go ahead and lead off with the Smeargle. And... I know what this thing's gonna do, it doesn't even have to paint the picture for me. I figure they probably are just kind of a sticky web, hazards lead with Spore, and this thing is annoying. Now, I decide to lead off with the Rotom just because I know I can obviously outspeed this thing, go for a Volt Switch, knock it down to, you know, its expected Focus Sash here, and then I can actually make the pivot into one of my two Grass types so that I don't get put to sleep by a Spore. So, we do knock it down to that Sash, and he is over there just angrily awaiting who's gonna come in to take some paint. So, I decide to go into uh, the Olive Tree. That's just because I'm thinking, you know, Spore seems pretty obvious, but they actually go for the Sticky Web, uh, likely expecting the pivot into the Grass type, which is a good play. And while the Sticky Web is a bit annoying, again, Chestnut does not care about how fast he is. They have that Grassy Glide anyway, and at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to finish off the Smeargle here. So, they do touch me with the Ceaseless Edge, which does give them a nice little layer of pointy Legos on my side, which is mostly annoying just because now things like my Avalug are not going to be able to have their Sturdy intact, and that's actually my only form of hazard control is with the uh, Rapid Spin on Avalug. So I am able to finish off the Smeargle, which is fine, and also we did get our Grassy Terrain activated uh, because they touched me. I mean, honestly, I believe it, this thing is super slept on. It's such a really fun Pokemon, especially... With its special defensive bulk, this thing can be a damn menace. So, they now decide to go into the conk. And this thing over here with his big ass cinder blocks is ready to do some damage. Now, they go for the drain punch. Honestly, kind of expected myself to die there. But I actually live, and then I'm able to fire off a strength sap. 
which is amazing. We give him a nice little honk on his weird little clown nose, and that's going to bring us back to full HP while in the process giving it a minus one attack. So, it turns out this thing is going to be Guts with that Flame Orb. It gets activated. Now it's got Guts boost, but it's minus one, so I'm like, can I live? I cannot. Yeah, drain Punch does finish me off now, and honestly, that I'm kind of happy with that because... The quicker the olive tree goes down, the faster I'm able to bring in Chestnut to try to take advantage of some of these grassy terrain turns. So, I'm now just going to go right into the man of the hour. Juggernaut is always in a position to where it's like, they surely are not going to think that I'm going to belly drum here, and I can kind of use that, uh, especially against a Pokemon that's going to have to hit me on the physical side. It has a minus one attack, and I know that a Drain Punch is going to do... You know, less than uh, less than half here. So they do go for that drain punch. It does do a nice little chunk of damage. It also is gonna heal up the guy. But it is now time to uh, start drumming. I go for that belly drum, and while it knocks me down to nine HP, uh, of course I maximize that attack. And now we actually are gonna get that citrus berry to make ourselves at least a little more comfortable in the case of a potential mock punch. We also do grab some health from that grassy train. Gonna bring us up to sixty nine. Nice. Uh, but also, we're feeling pretty good and set up at this point. So, I'm just going to go right for that Grassy Glide. There's really nothing else to do here. They probably don't expect that priority, and that is going to end up knocking this thing out. I do get the crit, uh, but it actually does not matter. Even without a crit, that definitely knocks that thing out, even if it's max HP. And we are absolutely rolling with the nut. Pause. So, now on the Revenge Switch, they do have a pretty good check to this, which is going to be the Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. And this thing is... Definitely one of the scarier mons in the metagame right now, just because it's the thing is crazy. So, the reason why I opted to set up the Chestnut versus the Conk is even knowing that this is in the back, I have the defensive Terra, and surely they have to go for an Ivy Cudgel here, which is going to be some Fire Stab, so I can go for that Terra Water, and again, with my nice physical defense, especially with a resisted hit, we should be easily able to take that. So, they are going to go for that Ivy Cudgel beat my ass with a fiery stick but that is not going to do anything and now that allows me to go right for the drain punch and right to the mask that is definitely going to take care of it not only that but gives us just so much health back and uh this chestnut is extremely fun to play just because it has so many ways to heal and it, it, way harder to take care of than you'd think a lot of belly drum sweepers they're kind of just used up quick but with, especially with grassy terrain it just it, this thing can stay alive so now they decide to go into the Iron Crown, and I know that a Grassy Glide here is not quite going to be able to take care of it, even at plus six, which is unfortunate, but they're just now going to go for the Volt Switch, which I am just barely able to live, which is amazing, and <laughs> we're just living Volt Switches all damn day out here. So, now they decide to go into King Gambit, and it is going to be Supreme Overlord, and King Gambit's come in, and what they do is they click Sucker Punch on stuff and just be annoying. So I'm thinking... You know, I'm able to just go for a Grassy Glide here, but a Sucker Punch is going to go first. And I'm just thinking maybe I can live, however I cannot. Just not quite enough health, which is unfortunate because I was, you know, in Overgrow range. And then Grassy Glide just demolishes everything. Uh, but we do get taken care of by the Sucker Punch. And that's just what King Gambit does best. Just ruins my fun most of the time. So, uh, at least Chestnut's not going to get the entire sweep here. And that's going to make this game a whole lot more interesting. Because now we're going to rely on some supporting members, and we're going to go right into the Flamigo here. This thing is absolutely my amigo, and I'm thinking this is perfect because I can resist a Sucker Punch, and then I can just knock his ass out with a four times super effective close combat, but they have different ideas, and it turns out this thing wants to have a party. They're going to go right for the Terra Flying, and uh, that is bad for me, because obviously while I'm able to get off a close combat, it now is going to do nothing. And especially after the defensive drop that comes with it, I am now going to get my little skinny ass leg snapped by an Iron Head. And uh, yeah, that does take care of me. So Scarf Flamigo was looking really good for the remainder of this match. Um, but they do use a nice little effective Terra there that is going to uh, take care of it. So at least I do have the Rotom here. Now Sucker Punch is their best damage here, of course. And I know that I can at least take one of them at full health. So as I go for the Volt Switch here, they do Sucker Punch. Uh, right to the old microwave door, and we are able to take it, and then a bolt switch is going to finish it off because I am choice Bex, which is amazing because that not only takes care of one of the scariest mines being the King Gambit, but also now they don't have the Terra active. So, uh, while I do get switched out here, I have to go into something that they're going to be able to, you know, bring a matchup in against, and I'm running out of options here. You know, of course, I decide to go into the Avalug, you know, just because this thing's kind of the least useful at this point. Of course, I do come in, take that Spikes, 
and the sticky web, which doesn't really matter because I'm not gonna be schmoving too fast anyway, but uh, my sturdy is now no longer intact, and this allows them to just go right into Iron Crown. And uh, Iron Crown, definitely a big threat. Two mons left, they have the Robot Cabalion along with a Palafin in the back, who is not quite yet hero form. So they go for the Tachyon Cutter, or whatever the hell it is, just gonna cut my ass up, and uh, it's gonna take care of Avalug. So we didn't get to do as much as we did last time, uh, which is fine, because Looking at this, I know that they have the Volt Switch coverage for the Slowbro, but I have to go into Paul here. Shout out to the absolute OG. If you guys have been around the channel for a while, uh, this Paul is the absolute goat. But I come in and we get hurt by some spikes and caught up in some webs, but we're not going to be running fast anyway. And I decided just to go for the neutral Scald. If they want to stay in, that's going to be able to take care of it. But also, it covers for the Switch into the uh, the Palafin here. So that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to go ahead and switch into Palafin, which is pretty perfect because honestly, Slowbro has been sticking around in the back just as a nice check to this thing. So as I go for that Scald, the main goal is to get burn. And we do actually get the Scald burn, which is amazing. And while it doesn't do, it does a nice chunk of damage, the burn is most important. And uh, as long as, you know, I can just take this thing out with the Slowbro, it's going to be us against an Iron Crown, which we should be able to win a matchup against. So they go for the Zen Headbutt there, likely just trying for a flinch, but instead you just take a Rocky Helmet right to the damn forehead, and that probably hurts. As uh, one more Scald brings this thing down to like one after the burn damage, um, but the best case scenario here is knowing that I can take an attack. I can then switch out, regenerate, and then have the matchup versus the Iron Crown, but they see that and they're just going to go ahead and run, and that is going to be the end of the game. So. I thought that was super interesting. Chestnut definitely opened the game wide open uh, for us to be able to have that position. And that is going to bring us into bonus match number three. Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to say, hey, if you haven't clicked that like button and you've made it this far into the video, you should probably just hit the button because it definitely helps you boy out. And I appreciate it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So important things to note from a matchup standpoint, with the Chestnut, they have like a, you have a Corviknight over there, they have a Mimic you who can easily at least take one attack, and that's going to make things a little interesting. So as I decide to lead off with the Microwave, it turns out they're actually just going to lead off with the Ogre Pond, and this time we're working with Wellspring. So of course I do know that uh, I'm definitely slower and I do not want to be Ivy Cudgeled into the damn Underworld, so I decide to switch into the Olive, and they actually just go for the U-Turn, which is... Quite unfortunate because while it does activate my seed sower, it gets just a huge amount of damage off on us, and it is starting to surge off early. So we do at least, you know, plant some grass, but that's going to now allow them to switch right into a Latios. So not exactly sure what this Latios is going to be working with here, but I also know I don't have a whole lot that wants to switch into it. This thing is kind of my special sponge, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna, you're just gonna go ahead and stay in here and try to get off a Hyper Voice. Now I am pretty damn specially defensive, so. As they do go for the Ice Beam, I actually live it with 2 HP, which is honestly crazy. I really did not expect to be able to live that. And then that allows us to go ahead and yell at the thing, and that gets it down to half, which is honestly more than I could ask for. So that's kind of perfect. I mostly stayed in here as a sack, but instead we get ourselves some nice little damage, and they actually end up making a switch here. They, they probably just do not want Latio's position in a point where I can revenge switch into it, so they actually just go right back into the Ogre Pond, and I'm fine with that, just because that allows me to now get like half on this thing, and I'm thinking, all right, all I need is a little bit of chip here and there, and it starts to, you know, it starts to stack up a bit, especially on the Latios, because it does resist the Grassy Glide, so they're gonna go ahead and finish me off with a U-turn on the Ogre Pond, and I am honestly fine with that, because that is gonna make them have to, you know, show me what they want to switch into, I can then grab myself a matchup and see if I can potentially get the chestnut to pop off. So, as they go right back into Latios, I'm like, what is this Switch game we're playing here? Who do you want me to battle against, bro? I'm gonna go into the chestnut, and of course, we are weak to a couple different things versus this, but the Terra Water is gonna put us in a position where I know that I can take at least one of them. And even if they do do over half, it's gonna activate our Citrus Berry to put us at a point where we can definitely uh, get off a belly drum. Also, that chip that we got on this Latios is going to put it in range to where a Grassy Glide uh, is going to be able to kill it, especially after a belly drum. So, I'm going to go for that Terra Water. They're just going to go right for the Luster Purge, which is extremely scary. Does do just a bit over half. It just gives us a little bit of a premature lunch time. It is time to pop the Citrus. And then it is go ahead, time to go ahead and pop some heads off because we're going to go right for that belly drum. And our attack is feeling nice and maximized. You know the drill at this point, 
And uh, the surprise factor, not only with the belly drum, is that also with the grassy glide. I'm figuring they probably just stay in here and finish me off and don't expect me to have priority, but they actually switched the Latios out. Buddy actually sees the grassy uh, glide coming and they're actually going to switch into the Corviknight. So, Corviknight is kind of the one thing that is going to defensively be able to stop me here. As I go for that grassy glide, not going to do a whole bunch of damage here. And I also get hit by Rocky Helmet, which is unfortunate. However, I'm feeling like uh, this thing, it probably can knock me out here, but I'm like, you know, I'm stuck in this anyway. I've, I've committed too much. They actually go for the U-turn, which we are able to live, which is amazing. And Buddy is just pivoting all over the place. And now you got to worry about who wants to take a drain punch because something is about to take a plus six, six punch. And I'll tell you what, I would not want it to be me. So as they go for that, they're going to go into their Heat Rotom. And uh, I just absolutely destroy that thing. And not only that, but also get some nice health back. Because now, uh, after that recovery, plus the grassy terrain recovery, we're, again, feeling more healthy than we probably should be at this point. And uh, that is fantastic. So, on the empty switch, they're actually going to go into the Ogre Pond. Which is a bold move, because they have seen the grassy glide. And this thing can only tear it into pure water. I go for that. It is just going to be a neutral hit, but of course at plus six... Her ass is not going to be living that, so we just destroy that mask and do a million pieces. And now, after the recovery, we're actually sitting above half health, where our grass does go away. And that's why I wanted to go into the chestnut after uh, the Arbeliva goes down, just to try to make as much use of that terrain as I can. But as they go into the Mimikyu here, I have a couple different options. Now, I know that without a Swords Dance, I can definitely take attacks from this thing, so I'm just going to go right for the grassy terrain. I'm going to set it right back up as they are going to Swords Dance here. So the Grassy Terrain, of course, is important just because it does give us priority with our uh, Grassy Glide, uh, but also that recovery we get from it is pretty meaningful as well, especially against a physical attacker here. Even with a Swords Dance, I'm feeling like I can actually take an attack here. So as I go for the Grassy Glide, I want to be able to pop that thing's head off and get rid of the Disguise just as quickly as possible because Mimikyu... Is the kind of guy that can turn the tide of a game. But also, as they go for the play rough, they actually miss. And that is because Game Freak lies about the accuracy of play rough. That shit is play miss, and it always misses, but that is extremely nice for us because now I can likely just finish the, this thing off with a grassy glide and not having to take any damage there is fantastic. And they're actually just going to go for the Terra Ghost. They're going to go all out against this. They, they realize... The implications of that play rough miss is real bad, and they can go for priority of their own, even boosted by that Terra Ghost. It's going to be extra hard hitting, but Juggernaut is defensive as titties. We're able to take it nicely, or at least able to live, which is nicely, and then allows us to finish it off with the Grassy Glide, which is fantastic, because down goes the Mimikyu, which is a huge threat you know, on its own, but also with that Ghost Terra, it is now gone. So while Chestnut is doing exactly what it's built to do, which is just punching holes in teams, it, it, we're now in a spot where things are going to get a little interesting. Because as they can go into Corviknight here, I know that this thing is going to be able to outspeed me, and the problem is a Brave Bird definitely kills me. So I have the option if I want to try to Drain Punch to see if I can live an attack, or just guarantee you know some solid chip with a Grassy Glide. I opt for the Grassy Glide just because I want to get as much damage off on this as possible. And uh, the Rocky Helmet damage is going to put me to a point where a Body Press kills me. Now, it's important to note that if it was Body Press, I might have been able to live had I just gone for a Drain Punch there, which would have been extremely satisfying. But again, I just opted for the guaranteed damage, and I feel like with what I have left, I can still be able to pull it off. So, the good news is I have the Rotom Heat as a fantastic answer to the Corviknight. Problem is, they have an answer to this being the, um, they have an Umbreon in the back. So, I'm going to go for the Volt Switch. It's a good middle ground play because obviously it takes care of the Corviknight. But, on the likely switch into an Umbreon, who is the most especially de defensive, annoying fella around. I can grab myself a little bit of chip, but then also now be able to have a matchup. And I do have a perfect answer, you know, in the form of the Flamigo. So, Choice Scarf Flamigo at this point is able to outspeed everything they have, barring potential Scarfs on their end. So as I go into the Flamigo here, they have a few choices. They can either switch back into the Corviknight, who does die to two close combats, and then they have the Latios left, who is not going to be able to take it super nicely just with the amount of health that it has left. So a Grass disappears, which is good, and I'm just going to go right for the predictable play. The close combat seems like my best option. They'd actually just decide to stay in here, 
and that is going to end up knocking out the Umbreon, which is great because these things are always extremely annoying. And now we don't have to worry about it taking three to four business days to knock out an Umbreon. So uh, now they have a switch into the Latio. So looking at this health, if this thing isn't scarfed, a close combat actually is not going to be able to be enough to do it. So I decided to just switch right into the Slowbro. I'm thinking maybe they go for the psychic coverage here. Uh, regardless, Slowbro is not super useful in the remainder of this match. So I just kind of bring this thing in as that knowing I can at least sponge attacks from this thing. They're going to go for the Luster Purge, which I do take nicely. Now, the problem is I literally just switched off Ice Beam on this thing for Flamethrower. And now that puts me in a position where I'm like, well, damn, I have to go for a Scald here. As uh, I can take attacks from this thing, a few more of them. A Scald's not quite going to be enough. And it's uh, just trying to roll for a burn. You know, and there's just a few Scalds plus a burn damage. It started to stack up and should be able to finish it off for me. But I'm only in a spot where now I can only take one more attack from this. So on my final Scald, I'm just like, well, this thing, it likely is Choice Scarf. Because if it wasn't, it probably would have just gone for like a Draco Meteor to finish me or something. Uh, but I do get it close. I do not get the Scald Burn, which does suck. But one more Luster Purge is going to finish me off. So as Slowbro goes down, now I'm looking at the remainder of the game. I'm thinking, okay, I have the Rotom, who definitely can take an attack at full health from this and finish off the Corviknight, but I'm like, you know, let's have a little bit of fun with it. I'm actually just going to go into the Flamigo just to be like, hey, if you're not Choice Scarf, Flamigo actually just gets to punch you and finish off the game. If it is Choice Scarf, however, this thing is, of course, naturally faster and, uh, you know, I die. So it turns out it is Scarf, which does make sense. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter because as Flamigo goes down, I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. Also, how many damn Luster Purges do you got over here, guy? This guy's PP maxed to the damn max. So... I'm just going to go right back into the Rotom, who at this point is the win condition. It's getting a little bit getting a little bit squirrely in this late game, but uh, it is pretty comfortable at this point because I know that as long as it's not Specs, I can take an attack. And uh, all I have to do is just lock myself into Thunderbolt here. They go for that Luster Purge. Barring a crit, I win the game. They do not get the crit, which is amazing. It does get the Spadef drop, but a little bit too late because a Choice Specs Thunderbolt, even as a resisted hit, is going to finish it off. And down goes the Latios. That thing is really scary these days with the Luster Purge buff. That shit hits really hard. So, Final Mon being the core of the night, they do not have a Terra in the back pocket. And especially with the chip we have on this thing, a Thunderbolt going to roast and toast the bird. And that is going to be the end of the game. So, I thought that was a, a pretty fun match. A lot of these games kind of showcase that Chestnut has the ability to like both sweep games, but also just be able to open up the door for the rest of the team to come in clutch. So... That's going to do it for the video, guys. Thank you guys very much for watching. For real, the support is amazing, and I really appreciate each and every one of you. And leave some comments. Let me know what you would like to see me highlight next. I always like to see if you guys have any, any heat tucked away, and I will definitely use it if I think it's cool. So, see you.